Well, hello everyone, and a very warm welcome to you. I know I say that every week, but I really do mean it. You are welcome, and I want to say a big thank you to you for pressing play on your computer or DVD player or dialing in on the phone and welcoming me into your homes. Today we are going to be thinking about welcome and we're going to start with one of my favourite hymns. I know that we are not gathered in God's house, but nevertheless, where we are, God is, and together we are God's people. And so our opening hymn is 198. Let us build a house where love can dwell.
Let us meet God in prayer. Let us pray. Hospitable God, your welcome is not cautious, nor measured, nor half-hearted, but warm and open, ready to reach out and embrace all. For your love is higher and wider than we can ever imagine. There is nothing we can do to make you love us less and nothing we can do to make you love us more. In your love we are always welcome and wanted and in your love there is always space. Space for the shame-filled and sorrowful. Space for the doubting and the unsure. Space for the prophets and pioneers. Space for the desperate and struggling. Space for the least and the lost. Space, Lord, for everyone in your love. May that love inspire us to worship and lead us to seek you with open hearts, minds and spirits, ready to hear all that you would say and receive all whom you will send our way, not with a cautious, measured or half-hearted welcome, but with a love that is as warm and as spacious as yours. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, whose outstretched arms on the cross remind us of the wideness of your grace and mercy. Amen. Well, there was a great excitement last week in the manse. I was in the study and all of a sudden Stephen shouted, Ruth, Ruth! I ran through to the living room and there, going up the River Clyde, was the Azamara cruise ship. It was a wonderful sight to behold and it was the first of another two that we saw that week. And it was also good to see the sights on Facebook and other places of that ship coming up the Clyde. People on board waving, especially the big hand that had been cut out, waving away and people gathering of course keeping a safe distance from each other and waving back. A good Clyde Bank welcome. And that is what our Bible reading is all about this morning. Not a Clyde Bank welcome, but God's welcome and the welcome of those who welcome the others in his name. Rory is going to read our Bible reading for us this morning. So let's listen for God's word. This reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. Thank you, Rory, for our reading this morning. We are going to sing again. The hymn Christ Be Beside Me.
There are some things that are always welcome, isn't there? Water, or something nice to drink on a hot day, a hug of encouragement, a word of kindness, or a touch that says, it's going to be okay. A cup of strong coffee, first thing in the morning. A phone call out of the blue, from someone just wanting to know how you're doing. A joke with a funny punchline. A compliment. A bit of chocolate when you need a sugar fix or at any time really. A friendly face. The laugh of a child. A memory that makes you smile. And good news. Good news is always welcome. This week, amid some of the sad phone calls I received and the bad news, not least like events in Glasgow on Friday, there was good news. Good news as the First Minister announced that on Friday there had been no COVID-19 related deaths registered the first since the 20th of March. That is good news indeed and long may it continue. And it wasn't the only good news either. For earlier in the week, she had announced the easing of some restrictions and a way out of lockdown step by step. And so on Monday, non-essential shops and zoos and playgrounds will reopen just in time for the school holidays. On Friday of next week, we can travel more than five miles. By the following Tuesday, we can meet outdoors with an extended group of people. And if the heavens open, then two households will be able to go inside. And then on the 15th of July, pubs, restaurants, museums, cinemas, and the one we have all been waiting for, hairdressers will finally reopen. Hallelujah, it can't come soon enough. This is all good news and it is welcome, isn't it? And it is welcome that is at the heart of our story today. Short verses that come at the very end of the chapter that we've been thinking about over the last few weeks, as Jesus has been preparing his disciples to go out and share in his ministry of proclaiming the good news. And he has made it very clear that they aren't in for an easy time. They're going to be sheep among wolves. At best, folks will ignore them. And at worst, well, they might just have to run for their lives. For what they say and do will not always be well received. But nevertheless, they've to be not afraid. For God loves and cares for them. And then we come to the last three verses of chapter 10. And the key word is welcome. Something that is mentioned earlier in the chapter by Jesus when he says that if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, well, leave that home or that town and shake the dust off your feet. Now he's talking about what happens when his disciples are welcomed and not turned away. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, he says, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And then he goes on to show us not only the wideness of God's welcome, talking about prophets and righteous folk and little ones, but how inter interconnected we all truly are. 
And how welcome is a two-way thing? We offer a welcome. And in doing so, we too receive. I could tie myself in knots with this today, but what I really want to say is this. If we say that we are followers of Jesus who has welcomed him into our lives, then that means we are also welcoming the one whom God welcomes. Not just those who are like us, or those who are like-minded, or those who belong to our own congregation, and not even are just those whom we think are deserving of a welcome. It is much, much wider than any of that. It includes the prophets, those whose words are hard to hear and are often rejected. It includes the righteous, those whose lives shout justice and are a challenge to our cosy living. And it includes the little ones, the least, the marginalised, those folks who are often overlooked and forgotten. If you want to welcome Jesus, and the God who sent him, then we must welcome all. And that was really brought home to me this week. When I arrived home to a voice message, the person had left their name, their number, and they had asked that I call them back. I did. And on the other end of the phone, was someone who had worshipped in one of our congregations before lockdown. They had enjoyed it. They had appreciated the chat over coffee. But now they just wanted to know, would they be welcome again among the nice people? With 100% sincerity and assurance, I was able to say, yes, yes, you are welcome. And why was I able to say that? Because I believe that God loves everyone, including the person who called me on the phone. And I was able to point out that there's no one in church who is perfect. That's part of the reason that we go, to remind ourselves and worship the one who is, the one who loves us, the one who sent Jesus into the world to show us and lived and died and rose again so that we might be free. Free to become the people who we are created to be reflecting God's image and living lives of welcome and justice and love. They were grateful, glad that they had called, and so was I, for I was reminded of God's gracious welcome to all. Today, May you be too, and may we all be both givers and receivers of good news that is welcome. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for good news. Thank you for the wideness of your mercy, the depth of your love, the warmth of your welcome, and for Jesus, who spent time in the company of many whom others shunned. We pray this day for those who feel like outsiders and who long to be heard and seen and to belong. 
for those who are rejected because of their past deeds and who long to be forgiven and start again. For those who are struggling with mental health or addiction and who long for the help they need to see them through and whole. For those who strive for justice and long for a world that is fair. For those who are sick and long for healing. For those who are worrying about themselves or a loved one and long for peace. For those seeking asylum and refuge and long for safety. For those who are grieving and longing and looking for comfort and hope. Lord, in the silence, hear our prayers, especially as we remember all those caught up in events in Glasgow on Friday. Eternal God, may the wideness of your mercy, the depth of your love and the warmth of your welcome reach all who need it this week and may we, your church, do our part in making it so. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Friends, before we sing our closing hymn, just a few notices. And that is a wee reminder of some of the ways that we can stay connected and catch up. And to help us do that, we have our Zoom calls on a Sunday at 11 and 11.30. And then on a Monday at 2 and a Monday evening at eight. And all are very welcome to join in with those. On a Thursday night, we have our time of prayer at eight o'clock, and that lasts normally in the region of 30 to 40 minutes. And all are welcome to that too. This coming week, we have Tai Chi on Tuesday and a quiz night on Friday. So please do look out for details of that. And on a Tuesday, we have story time with Gillian for the young and young at heart. And on Thursday, Lorraine's Reflections, both of which are posted on Facebook and links to YouTube for the story time. I would also like to draw your attention to some of the other things that have been going on. For instance, on a Wednesday, many of you will be aware that Dalmuir Barclay has been open between 12 and 2 in order for Oakopatrick food parcels to distribute among those in need. And I have to say, friends, that the need is great. And to that end, I'm encouraging you all 
to donate to Olcopatric Food Parcels so that they can continue the good work that they have started. There are details about where you can drop food off to. And for those who aren't in the Dalmuir Barclay area, for those at Waterfront, for instance, um, who normally had a regular collection for Weston Barton Community Food Share, then I encourage you to drop something into the trolley at ASDA or wherever else you know of. Those donations will be truly welcome. Please do stay safe. Please continue to pray for one another, especially those in our midst who are grieving at this time and there are quite a few and let's look forward to the time when we can all be together once again. Let us live lives of welcome and love and of justice and the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is not one that I had planned for today, but on Thursday when out in the car, it popped into my head and I thought, of course, that's perfect, for it has the line. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Let us praise the Lord in our closing hymn, 512.